One of the main reasons uh, for my wanting to write a book like this are probably personal reasons. They stem out of having read a number of the authors in the book uh, over a good 10, 15, 20 years, uh, realizing what these letters had meant to me personally, uh, at least some of their lives. Uh, one of them uh, I may have a chance to read later, Samuel and Sarah Pierce. Their, their marriage has meant much to me personally and uh, thought that this would be great to be able to share with others. These are not the sort of things that are normally uh, shared in the recounting of church history. And yet there is, there's a lot of treasure here. A book like this is, is very helpful in reminding us of uh, that vows given at a time of marriage commit one to lifelong fidelity and as a way of, of responding to the to the collapse of marriage, not simply in our culture at large, but in Christian circles. It is, it is very disturbing. Um, and I, I've asked to older pastors, men in their late 70s and 80s, you know, uh, when you first began ministry, what was it, the sort of things we see today, was it, was it like that then? And the, the uniform answer is no. And so here is a book I hope that will cull wisdom from the past. Uh, we don't live in those days, but help, help us to live faithful lives in this day. There is a vulnerability. Again, Baxter could say, God has called us to be friends. And uh, what greater friend do you have than your wife? And who then should you reveal the challenges of your life and your weaknesses to, but her who is given to you to help you? The whole area of, of male headship and, and the husband as the head of his wife is, is very misunderstood in our culture. Uh, and it's misunderstood by Christians if they think it doesn't entail vulnerability.